Hello friends, welcome into the Cowboys Report presented by BetDSI, the internet's number one sportsbook. I am your host Tom Downey, back now with some defensive free agents for the Dallas Cowboys. We start things off with the biggest one by far across offense and defense. That is Demarcus Lawrence. And not only is he the Cowboys top free agents, he is the NFL's best free agent. Feel free to at me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowney if you want to be wrong about Demarcus Lawrence not being the best NFL free agent. Now, Demarcus Lawrence could be tagged. He has said he wants a long-term deal. So if Tank does get tagged, this could get a little bit ugly. Now, the franchise tag will cost Demarcus Lawrence $20 million per year, or, or next year. That's kind of the baseline for contract talks. And with the way the NFL salary cap continues to rise, and the way players' salaries rise after what Cleo Mack and Aaron Donald got, Demarcus Lawrence is going to be very, very expensive, which is why the Cowboys should have re-signed him last year. Now, he had a good year this year, 64 tackles, 10.5 sacks, double-digit tackles for loss as well. Demarcus Lawrence has been an elite edge rusher. The past two years, here are the most sacks by edge rushers. So Chandler Jones, Ryan Carrick, and then Clayus Campbell, Cam Jordan, Demarcus Lawrence all have been fantastic. Kerrigan, by the way, I don't think many people would have gotten that one right on a guess. Now, sacks can be a bit fluky. You know, sometimes you get double teamed, you get the pressure, someone else gets the sack, you miss the sack, whatever. So let's look at pressures. Look at those names. Khalil Mack, Vaughn Miller lead the way, which makes sense for what I think most people would say when you say, okay, who are the best passers in the NFL? Again, edge guys only, so we're not including Aaron Donald here. Demarcus Lawrence is second with 142. And by the way, he's a fantastic run defender. Demarcus Lawrence is an elite defensive end, elite edge rusher. He is going to get a massive contract. So let me know in the comment section, how much would you pay Demarcus Lawrence per, per year? And then DM me on Twitter, at what going down, the, the, uh, the, the handle's right there on your screen. And I'll tell you guys how much I would pay him. And then by the way, Later on this offseason, we'll have an in-depth contract breakdown for DeMarcus Lawrence. So subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report. If you're already watching on YouTube, well, the link's right there and the subscribe button's right there. So just hit it. If you're on Facebook, go type that into your search bar right there. It'll take you to the page. We'll have news, rumors, draft content, free agency, and fan-led stuff like a mailbag and live Q&As, plus some of those contract projections there. For DeMarcus Lawrence, Dak Prescott, and many of the Cowboys' top free agents and pending free agents down the road like Amari Cooper. All right, next up on the Cowboys' list of all their defensive free agents, Damian Wilson. He has been a serviceable starter at the strong side linebacker spot, i.e. when the Cowboys use three linebackers, he's the guy that tends to come onto the field. Now, Wilson only gets like 18 snaps per game. He's going to be a free agent. Down the road, you got to pay Leighton Van Der Esch and Jalen Smith. How much do you actually want to pay your number three linebacker who isn't a great pass rusher, doesn't bring you that type of strong side linebacker ability? I'm not giving him that much. He's not that great in coverage. He does his job well enough for those 20 snaps plus some good special teams play, but I'm not willing to pay Damian Wilson a bunch of money. If he wants to come back cheap, on, I don't know, a Terrence Williams type deal for a receiver, I guess, or linebacker, which I guess is a, a, a little bit less, take a team discount, then sure. But I don't think the Cowboys need to invest big money right now in Damian Wilson. Frankly, I think doing that would actually be a, a, a silly decision. So Damian Wilson, I don't think the Cowboys need to bring him back in terms of a big money type of way. Let him leave if, if he gets a, if a big offer. If not, they'll be fine. Next up, Daniel Ross, the Cowboys' lone exclusive rights free agent. Now, if you don't know what that means, you are far from alone. It basically refers to a player who has two options. Sign the very cheap contract is, that your NFL team is going to offer you, or don't play football again. Or don't play football next year. So, for all exclusive rights free agents, they end up re-signing with their current team. So he is a rotational piece at defensive tackle. Cowboys will bring him back and let him compete for a role again next year. Kind of more of a penetrator. Actually put up some good numbers this year, right? Three tackles for loss, a sack, and limited playing time. Sowed some flashes, but I don't think he ever ends up being a full-time starter on the defensive line. Today's show was brought to you by BetDSI. It's the Internet's number one sport. Head over to chatsports.com slash bet and use promo code COWBOYS120 for a 120% deposit bonus. You're running out of time here to actually bet on the NFL. Just the Super Bowl is left, 
and they've got plenty of prop bets up there as well. So go bet right now, chatsports.com slash bet. And while promo code Cowboys120 gets you a 120% deposit bonus, if you deposit with Bitcoin, BetDSI will give you a 150% deposit bonus. So put that 100 bucks, they'll give you 150 in extra money if you use Bitcoin. If you have some issues with Bitcoin, just let us know. DM us on Twitter, at ChatSports, and we'll help you guys out. Back to the defensive free agents for the Dallas Cowboys. How about Karan Reed, who got a late addition to the Cowboys preseason roster, and then got called to the active roster after he made some flashes in camp in the preseason. And there were injuries up front. And he did a fine job. Look, he and Daniel Ross are not going to be 30 snap guys a game at defensive tackle. And you don't actually want them to be. They kind of play a bit of a similar role. So he's an unrestricted free agent. He might get a maybe a slightly bigger offer from a team that paid attention and needs more defensive line help. But I am down to bring back Karan Reed to compete for a job again. I am not guaranteeing him a roster spot. I don't think he's that caliber of player because he was unsigned for a pretty good portion of the year. But I am down to bring in Karan Reed, have him be some more defensive line help. Now, in general for the Cowboys defense, a lot of them are free agents in terms of the defensive line. Reed, we'll talk about two guys on there, David Irving, Daniel Jones in a little bit. Daniel Ross, I'm not even going to list him with the asterisk there because he's an ERFA and he'll be back next year, of course, in the end. So Marcus Lawrence, by far the single most important one there for the Dallas Cowboys. You had better make sure the Cowboys re-sign him. But in general, I'd say defensive tackle is one of the Cowboys' bigger needs with Malik Collins, Crawford's contract is ending in the near future. Woods will need to be paid too. So should the Cowboys draft a defensive tackle in the first three rounds? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I say yes. Go get somebody. It's a fantastic draft class. And I want to know that of, of some of my potential targets, A, we'll have videos about those later on in the offseason, but also DM me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny. I'll throw out some potential names for you in my, in my mentions or in my direct messages. All right, Justin March Lillard. He is next up an unrestricted free agent who mostly plays on special teams. Now, he made a couple of tackles. He does some good things on special teams, but you can find those guys round five, round six, round seven. You don't need to pay them big money or even guarantee them a roster spot. So even if JML or Justin Marshall Lillard does resign, I don't think there's any guarantee that he ends up making the roster next year for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, I am down to, to bring him back on a one-year close to the vet minimum deal and say, cool, go compete for a spot, and he might end up making it. But I don't think you need to promise him playing time because I don't think he's that elite type of linebacker. Now, the Cowboys do have two notable free agents that we went over, Damian Wilson, Justin March, Lillard as well. You could see them cut Sean Lee. So although you're set long-term with Jalen Smith and Leighton Vanish as your top two linebackers, you could at some point look for more depth in the draft. And I am down with a fifth round, sixth round, seventh round pick, one of those mid to late day three guys to just help out, fill out your roster and help out on special teams. All right, Cowboys Nation, thank you so much for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, go subscribe, youtube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report. We do live Q&As. We do NFL draft coverage, free agency coverage, all kinds of stuff for you. It's the best Cowboys channel out there on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report is that. And then go follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny as well. Feel free to tweet me any questions you have on the Dallas Cowboys. Even if we're not doing a mailbag that day, I'll still be sure to answer or at least reply to them. So, again, YouTube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report, and then me on Twitter, at WhatGoingDowny. Next up, oh look, another defensive lineman, Dayton Jones, who missed all of this year with a ham, or almost all of this year, with a hamstring injury. did briefly play in one game with no with no. Uh, stats there. He does bring some positional flex. Originally drafted as an edge rusher. Moved inside the DT. Can play defensive end. Can play some defensive tackle. I am down to bring him back. I thought he made some good plays in 2017 but he missed all this year with an injury and frankly Daniel Ross, Karan Reed, because they played last year I think would have more value and more of an importance to the Cowboys roster in terms of defensive tackles. How about the Cowboys lone restricted free agent Darian Thompson. Now the Cowboys have to decide if they're going to tender Thompson or not. He almost played exclusively on special teams. He had one defensive snap against, I'm pretty sure it was the, the, the Jags early on this year. Now, the Cowboys can offer him the, the minimal tender. He could come back, or they could say, we're not going to tender you and bring you back on maybe a cheaper deal or just let him go you know, to free agency altogether. Either way, I liked him a lot coming out of Boise, but I don't think he's going to be the impact safety I thought he could be. 
but it does bring you added depth, and the Cowboys could always use some more safety depth. Either way, even if they tender Thompson, that's not going to stop them from looking at more safety help, be it an Earl Thomas or early on in the NFL draft. All right, guys, I am wearing a Mizzen and Main shirt. It makes me look passable on air. So just imagine what it could do for you. Go check them out, comfortable.af. They make shirts, sweaters, and they're all insanely comfortable and made right here in America. Comfortable.af is the site. Time now for the last free agent for the Cowboys on defense. That is David Irving. And he's last because I'm done with him. We all know how talented David Irving is. When he's on the field, he's super good. You put together his last 16 games, and it's all pro level type stats. The problem is the dude's never on the field. He played in two games this year, had about the snap count worth of one full game starting. Plenty of talent, but so far, the reality is that David Irving has wasted his talent, and that's incredibly disappointing. He, when he had that high ankle sprain that cost him the rest of the year, that is normally a six to eight week injury. It took him longer, or a four to six week, four to six week injury. It took him longer than that. That's not a good sign for David Irving. He missed meetings, missed rehab, barely showed up right around the facility, missed multiple mandatory drug tests. I know he's got a lot of stuff going on outside of his life and in his personal life and outside of football. But so do a lot of other NFL players, and most of them are able to juggle both. So as great as David Irving is, as cheap as he might be, he is no longer worth it to me. I'm typing in L. I am letting him leave, and I'm saying, David, you know what? You made some big plays for us. Best of luck elsewhere. We'll help you if we can. But you are no longer worth our time, our effort, and our money because you just can't get on the field. So I am sorry for David Irving. I feel bad for him. But the Cowboys have to win games, and David Irving has not helped them win games as of late. All right, to recap the Cowboys' defensive free agents, David Irving, Dayton Jones, the man, Demarcus Lawrence, pay tank whatever he wants, Karan Reed, and then Daniel Ross, Justin March Lillard, Damian Wilson, and, Dar and uh, Darian Thompson. Not, in reality, not that many big name free agents on offense or on defense. The big one, though, go make sure that you find a way to keep Demarcus Lawrence. He has got to stay on the Cowboys roster. Now, go check us out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report. We have the offensive one up already posted. So subscribe, go look at the video. It's early up there. And we also got news, rumors, NFL draft coverage, free agency, and fan-led content like our mailbags, like our live Q&As, all available youtube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report. Go hit that subscribe button and join the best Cowboys channel on YouTube. Hey Cowboys fans, thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.